WWE Money in the Bank ladder match. Apollo is out. A big gauntlet match on Monday Night Raw determines the last competitor. Oh my! It's AJ Styles! Ah! And people, he is the final competitor in the men's ladder match. People, I was shocked. Even though we got a spoiler. Wait a minute. How did they know that AJ Styles is going to return and even win a gauntlet match? How did they know that? Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me wrestling's fake? Well, it's not fake, it's scripted! Yeah, anyway, I'm just glad that during Monday Night Raw, I got to see my favorite YouTuber in the ring. Big booty! Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Greatness of Monday Night Raw. Not a lot of greatness, man. There is a reason why I didn't make reviews recently. Uh, dude, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of these shows without the crowd. And people are going to say, oh, you're so ignorant. There is a reason why there is no audience. I know that. Trust me, I do realize that. And I'm not blaming WWE or anyone for that matter at all. I'm just saying that I've got so tired of these shows, man. The other day I had WWE Network on and they aired uh, Money in the Bank 2011 John Cena vs CM Punk and this match was so great, man. You wanna know one of the biggest reasons? Audience. The crowd. And it made me realize how much I actually missed it. I wonder how the wrestlers feel about it. It must be really weird for Titus O'Neil coming out with no audience. It must feel very unnatural. And you may wonder why am I making a review right now. Well, the good thing is, I did not miss Raw, Smackdown, it's still hard to watch. But the good thing is, I've missed doing reviews. I'm not the most positive guy on the planet, so talking crap about wrestling being negative as much as I hate that word about wrestling it's kind of my job that's what i do love it by the way so let's talk about monday night raw the show kicks off with the vip lounge of mvp this time it was all about the women we got nia Jax, ask and china baszler mvp asks nia Jax if she thinks she has the skill set to win money in the bank are you even watching raw did you see me dominate when she talks my ball squeezes into this little ball and it does not feel good let's just say that now, I'm not the biggest fan of this comedy shtick of Asuka speaking Japanese and that's supposed to be funny, I don't really understand that, but this time it was actually pretty funny because she called Nia Jax Big Booty and that was funny, <laughs> that's, that's pretty good, okay, I like that. And China Baszler cuts the typical, I'm not, you know, going to talk, my actions speak for itself kind of crap. And she's right, I mean, she's the most dominant WWE female right now on the roster, probably. So, yeah, that was, I'm, I was not a big fan of this segment, uh, I thought it was pretty pointless to be quite honest with you, and not a very good way to kick off the show, the only highlight for me was Big Booty. Asuka's great, I'm, I'm, I'm turning into a big Oscar Mark. Last chance gauntlet match. Winner goes to Money in the Bank. We got Bobby Lashley versus Titus O'Neil. It's funny, I don't remember the last time I've seen Titus O'Neil in the WWE. I really don't. Every time he makes an entrance, I immediately hope he's going to slip. You know? But once I seen Titus O'Neil, I was like, okay, so I don't expect a lot of legit legit superstars and that's why I was so surprised by the end of the match. I was like, okay, Bobby Lashley is definitely going to money in the bank and he's going to beat, you know, your Titus O'Neil, Akira Tozawa's and all of these, you know, kind of, you know, jobbers anyway. But that was not the case. So Bobby Lashley beats Titus O'Neil, we got Akira Tozawa and of course Bobby Lashley wins again. Then we got Shelton Benjamin, which actually surprised me again, but of course Shelton Benjamin lost as well. Then we got Humberto Carrillo, which was again a pretty long match for what it was and somehow someway Humberto takes the W, he beats Bobby Lashley. Well, it was, yeah, I, I think it was, yeah, it was by disqualification, so, yeah, Humberto, st still not strong, still not over. Of course, Bobby is angry, he beats the crap out of Humberto, and that's when we got Angel Garza, but Humberto, our boy, Humberto, honey, Humberto beats Angel Garza, and then, people, we got Austin Theory, and Austin Theory lost as well, come on, dude. Big props to Humberto, great job, but then, people, this is when the dream 
was over because we got the phenomenal one, AJ Styles making his entrance and AJ Styles obviously beats Humberto Carrillo and is going to money in the bank. I didn't really like the explanation after the match, you know, AJ Styles basically said, well, I'm back and he didn't really explain how he got out of the grave and... Yeah, that was kind of crappy, I expected a lot more to be quite honest with you, although I gotta say AJ Styles without the club, the OC, feels more legit. And I'm not glad these two got fired, not at all, that's not what I'm saying, I'm just saying that AJ Styles alone feels more of a main eventer to me. And maybe that's because he was a main event when he was alone and he was never really that big of a deal when he was with the OC, I don't know, I don't know. The thing is, I... I like him more uh, as a singles competitor, and I believe it's time to turn the guy face, honestly. That wasn't the case though, because after the, after the match he beat the crap out of Humberto, but you get the point. Then we got his Seth Rollins promo. And you know, he's cutting that delusional promo that this is not about Drew McIntyre, this is not about Seth Rollins, this is about the WWE, Drew McIntyre doesn't feel like a champion or something. Basically, Drew McIntyre is not a leader and it's not his destiny to be the champion that leads WWE into the future. It's Rollins' destiny. Rollins says, at Money in the Bank, his destiny will become a reality when he stands in the ring, his hands held high, and the announcement rings true. A new WWE champion, the Monday Night Messiah Seth Rollins. I feel like I've heard that promo already, like a couple of weeks ago, so yeah. It wasn't bad, I still like the gimmick. I believe there's a lot more that WWE could do with that gimmick, I'm being honest, but it's still pretty decent. Now what I do like is the fact that we got Buddy Murphy versus Drew McIntyre, and Buddy Murphy is kinda showing a bit more personality. He basically said that one day, he knows that he is going to be just as good as Seth Rollins, if not better. That day will come, but right now he's going to focus on Drew McIntyre, so he's basically planting seeds for a future Seth Rollins versus Buddy Murphy Ryrie, so he's not an idiot. Like, he knows what's on the table. He's basically also using Seth Rollins for his own gain. I love it because I believe the last time I've done a Monday Night Raw review, I talked about the fact that he's not necessarily being pushed that much, like he's in such a good position right now, but still he's just a lackey, but right now you kinda see him more than that. MVP motivated Shane Thorne and Brandon Vink, and yeah, that actually worked because then we got Ricochet and Cedric Alexander versus these two, and uh, yeah, the match was pretty fine, and surprisingly, these two won. These two NXT people won against Monday Night Raw Tag Team. And I gotta appreciate the sell by Ricochet, I think, yeah. Now, the thing is, I'm happy you got a new tag team. You know, I hope they're gonna be successful, as always, man. Like, I'm not that big of a D. I just feel like, at this point, I don't see them as entertaining, I guess. Just two people in their underwear, very, very generic, very generic, no personality, just, ha, huh, we are, I'm tall, I'm six foot two, and my, my friend is also strong. We are wearing underwear, and we are very strong men from NXT. We strong. Come on, dude, I don't think they're gonna get over, honestly, with that. Well, then we got Street Profits versus the Viking Raiders people. Uh, big match, honestly. Let's be fair, these two are the biggest tag teams on Monday Night Raw right now, probably hands down, because yes, the Street Profits are the champions, the Viking Raiders are former champions, very dominant, you know, barely lose matches. Uh, it seems like they are heels right now, I, I don't even understand that to be quite honest with you. The thing is, that was pretty decent, you know, love watching these in the ring, as much as I don't like the personality of the Street Profits, they are very good in the ring. Now, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, I don't know, it depends on the way you look at it, the Viking Raiders won the match. I mean, it makes sense, they are probably going to be the contenders for the championships, but yeah, they won the match, so we're probably getting a tag team match, money in the bank. Are we? I don't know, I honestly didn't see the announcement. Money in the bank, okay. Let's talk about Dominic instead. I'm Charlotte Flair, I'm strong, I'm NXT champion, Io Shirai is a fan, I'm her dream opponent, and Liv Morgan interrupts, and Liv Morgan, are you a fan as well? Oh no, Charlotte, you are Ric Flair's daughter. That's an insult that we are still using. Okay, let's have a match. That was a pretty decent match, 
Of course, we got the match. And you know what? Charlotte Flair won. I'm shocked. I don't understand what WWE are doing with Charlotte. Like, every time she comes out and cuts the same promo. I'm genetically superior and blah, 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 blah. Who cares at this point? Who cares? And people, in the main event, we got Drew McIntyre versus Murphy. And that was very fun to watch because it told a bit of a story. Big guy versus a regular sized guy. Well, I guess. I liked the spot with the chops, you know, that was pretty cool. Drew McIntyre didn't feel a thing, but once Drew McIntyre hit it, oh boy. So yeah, that was a pretty decent match in which obviously Drew McIntyre won, but then we got Seth Rollins. Drew McIntyre was begging for a fight, sponsored by Aleister Black. But Seth Rollins said no. Drew McIntyre is obviously distracted. Seth Rollins comes back with a super kick. He wanted to beat the living crap out of Drew McIntyre. He failed. Uh, Drew McIntyre was dominant, but Seth Rollins Rollins got out of the way so pretty much Drew McIntyre stands tall his music hits and this is a match we are getting at money in the bank it's not a very good rivalry but I mean I, I guess it's it's all right like I've said it's good as a first rivalry what I want to see in the future is I'm pretty sure you guys know that by now Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. I believe this is going to be one of the most legit rivalries. By the way, I did not talk about Jinder Mahal last uh, week he returned. And this may be unpopular, I don't know, I'm happy. I want this guy to succeed, I want him to, you know, be a main eventer. Sometimes an injury to a wrestler, well, most of the time, actually, it's kind of good, anyway, you know. He comes back, all of a sudden gets a push. And I believe WWE are building Jinder Mahal for that dream match, kinda. You know, in 2020, believe it or not, uh, Jinder Mahal versus Drew McIntyre is a dream match. For me, at least. I, I, I want to see it. I know Drew McIntyre is going to win, but hopefully Jinder is not getting buried. I want to see that match and hopefully we're getting that in a couple of months. But first, don't do the same mistake. First, make sure to build Jinder Mahal. Make sure he looks dominant, beats a couple of main eventers, and we're all happy. Make sure Jinder beats Rollins or something. I don't know. So that's your Monday Night Raw review. Again, not a very bad show. Okay, I'm just, I'm just sick of everything that's going on, man. I, I want the crowd back. I want to see the Brock Lesnar guy. I want to see the green shirt guy. I want to see the guy with long hair that always stares into my soul. I want to see the gang, man. I want to see the Monday Night Raw crowd gang. These three people. I want. I also want to see the sign guy. You know, I miss you. <laughs> Anyway, people, thank you for watching the video. If you want to support the channel on Patreon, that is very appreciated because I'm earning, like, I don't know, from videos 30% of what I used to. So, yeah, it's pretty bad. I might upload two videos a day from now on. So, thank you for watching the great one. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>